Hey everybody, it's Dan and welcome back to the Rock Nerd Radio Show. Today we're going to be doing something a little special. We are going to be taking a look ahead into what I am hoping to see out of 2024. Come geek out with us on the Rock Nerd Radio Show. Alright, so let's just get into it. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time um, with intros here. This is what I want to see out of 2024. Now, I don't collect a lot of lines anymore. I've been slowly cutting down on things. And, um, yeah, just kind of, you know, figuring out where I want to collect, what I want to collect, what areas I want to collect. So I'm just going to focus on the things that I'm really collecting. It's a big, bad toy world out there. There are a lot of awesome companies doing a lot of awesome things. I can't afford to buy everything. I don't really want to cherry pick any, uh, a lot anyway. There are a couple lines I cherry pick, but, uh, I don't want to like, oh, okay, one NECA figure and one this figure and one that figure. I don't want to do that because then I feel like I'll just have messy shelves. I like to have things organized. Um, I will admit, I'm, I'm not one to necessarily jump in on rumors, so what I'm going off of, what I'm talking about, there might be rumors already pertaining to some of this stuff that I haven't seen, and uh, that's just going to be how I go. If you know of something that is rumored, let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear it. But, but anyway, the first line that I want to talk about today is the Masters of the Universe toy line. Um, I don't buy a lot of Motu stuff. When it comes to Motu Origins, I just buy Horde. I strictly buy Horde. When it comes to the Masterverse, the seven inch stuff, I buy Horde and stuff, and I do buy um, like Skeletor's crew, because I like big monstrous looking monster people. Um, there isn't a lot right now on my radar for that. I do have Triclops on pre-order, the uh, new Eternia Triclops. He's on pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store. Um, the only one in that wave, I believe, that I'm getting. And I do know there have been some rumors for the Revolution cartoon that's coming out on Netflix at the end of January. Um, I believe the rumors do kind of showcase some Horde stuff. I believe there is a Horde Trooper uh, coming out, which might have al alternative additional heads. I believe there was a rumor for a, uh, a Revolution Leech, as well as an Emperor Hordak, um, if, if my memory is correct. So I'll definitely be picking those guys up because I, I like Horde stuff. So uh, that would be something that would definitely be on pre-order. If they put out any more of Skeletor's crew from like the original kind of era of He-Man with this new attorney at Twist, I'll probably pick some of them up. Um, I have a pretty big uh, army of Skeletor's characters, but I don't really know how many more I really need at this point. All right, the next line that I very much do cherry pick from is the G.I. Joe Classifieds line. And... Uh, I, I, I've said it in a video before, I just buy Python Patrol from G.I. Joe Classifieds. That when, when the idea of G.I. Joe Classifieds came out, I very much wanted to buy, you know, all the named characters. All, everyone who's a, who's a name, who not just a, a trooper. Um, but distribution at first wasn't great. When I couldn't find a major blood, I got discouraged and sold off what I had. Most of what I had. I ended up finding a major blood like a week after I did that and I was kicking myself. But... Uh, it, it, it worked out well because I ended up saving some money, but um, I did keep buying Python Patrol. I don't know if Python Patrol is continuing as a Target exclusive this year. Um, I know they've had Tiger Force and Python Patrol. If there are going to be more, I'll buy them. You know, sometimes I buy two of the troopers, sometimes I buy one. It kind of depends. My shelf is getting very crowded very fast. Um, the one thing that I really, really want to see when it comes to uh, a G.I. Joe Classifieds figure. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a Target exclusive. This would probably be a mainline release. I want a Battle Armor Cobra Commander. Back in, during the uh, the Deke days of G.I. Joe, the Operation Dragonfire, I believe it was called, this miniseries, um, where they introduced Python Patrol. That's when Cobra Commander comes back. He gets the Battle Armor. I would love to have a Battle Armor Cobra Commander, because to me, that is the leader of Python Patrol. In fact, as a kid, the only Cobra Commander that I had for quite a while was a Battle Armor Cobra Commander. So to me, that is uh, how you know I'm used to Cobra Commander looking. I would love to have that figure. I also had a uh, black hooded Cobra Commander as a kid. Um, it was one of the, uh, he had like one of the big sound backpacks and one of those big missile launchers that G.I. Joe figures kind of got as time went on. I wouldn't say no to a black hooded Cobra Commander either. Um, I'd probably have to resist buying that one, but we'll see what we get. Apparently, there's some kind of red things that Hasbro might be against putting out figures with the hood on, so fine, but I would take a uh, Battle Armor Cobra Commander. That is one that I would absolutely love to get my hands on. Really hoping that that comes out in 2024. One toy line that I backed this year via Kickstarter is the Combat Creatures, and I love Battle Beasts. I'm literally wearing a Battle Beast shirt right now. 
I have a full American Battle Beast collection, so the combat creatures being kind of an homage to Battle Beast really caught my eye. Uh, I had Bo, the creator of combat creatures, on my radio show. We had a great conversation, and I would I, I can't wait till that stuff comes out. I believe he said it could be this summer that this stuff is making it to your door if you backed it. Um, so that's something I'm very excited for. I would love to see them do more of this line if it does so well, whether it would be Kickstarter, if you know, it, like stores like Big Bad, Big Bad Toy Store can get them. I'm definitely in for combat creatures this year. Um, so that is something that I'm really looking forward to, something I'm looking forward to putting on my shelf. I think those figures are gonna be a lot of fun. All right, other two areas that I cherry pick from are uh, Gundam and Star Wars, and that might be an odd thing to put together, but uh, yeah, I do have a couple Gundam figures on my shelf, namely from Gundam Wing. The uh, Gundam Universe figures have been really cool. I currently have Dev Sight Hell as he appeared in Endless Waltz on pre-order. I would love to get more of the mobile suits from Gundam Wing on my shelf, especially an Epion. My biggest hope this year is for an Epion. While I am getting the ones from Endless Waltz, I feel like they're not the ones I really want. Um, I don't even necessarily need like the version two of everybody from Gundam Wing. Uh, I'll buy them if they put them out. But uh, Epion, Epion is my biggest want from Endless Waltz. And then I did say Star Wars. Uh, literally, as I'm recording this today, the uh, Book of Boba Fett version of The Mandalorian came out, which I only got because he came with the Darksaber, and I think he has some kind of different articulation. I gotta play around with it. But I have to say, I'm kind of getting tired of Star Wars figures. I was buying strictly Mandalorian characters, and I think because I personally didn't love Mandalorian Season 3, I kind of fell out of wanting to own a lot more Mandalorian figures. In fact, right now, where my Star Wars display is, I have some Transformers standing in front of the Star Wars figures. Um, I don't know if I'm going to clear out my Star Wars collection at the end of the, uh, during this year, but I don't foresee buying a whole lot more. You know, that was a, uh, a collection that I thought would be kind of contained. It ended up growing more than I thought it would, um, and I don't dislike it, but I don't feel like I need to keep buying stuff from it. So I don't know if my uh, Mandalorian collection is going to last. I might cut it down a little bit, keep some characters, but we'll see how that goes. All right, the next line that we're going to talk about is one of my favorite lines. We're going to talk about Transformers, and we are kicking 2024 off with the Legacy United toy line, uh, the first wave of Legacy United. The only figure that I got from that first wave between the Leader class stuff, the Voyager class stuff, the Deluxe, and the uh, Core class was Windblade, and initially I wasn't even gonna get Windblade. I just thought she would be a good upgrade from the Titans Return version, and I think I was right with that when I did put a video out um, of the which is better comparing the two Windblades. Um, and I, I honestly, I personally like um, the Legacy United version better myself. So she's currently on my shelf. But um, I do know that this year, um, I think they're like, aside from that whole wave one of Legacy uh, United, which again, I'm not really getting anything from, I do know that we are getting the Titan class tidal wave and I'm kind of torn on it because I try to keep my collection to G1, you know, era G1 specific and G2 type stuff. But when I got back into collecting transformers, I did pick up both the American and Japanese version of tidal wave and tidal wave is just a cool looking figure. Um, you're going to give us a title class tidal wave. It looks really cool. Those pictures that came out from whatever it was, the Tokyo toy show or whatever. Um, that Tidal Wave looks really, really awesome. So I'm, I, I might end up picking up Tidal Wave, even though it's a character who is not a G1 character and it is a Titan at that. So it is going to take up a lot of shelf space. Um, I mean, looking behind me, I'm not even really sure where I'm gonna put it because that side, you know, from Unicron over, that's all taken up with, by Titans. So I don't know where I would put Tidal Wave if I get him, I suppose they're, there, there could be a little room next to Black Zarak up there. Um, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm debating on that one. I don't want to say like, oh, I'll wait to buy it on sale um, because sometimes those sales don't happen. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm not sure where I am with Tidal Wave. Um, the Magmatron, that is the Commander class this year, I can pass. I'm not doing Beast Wars, let alone Beast Wars 2nd or Beast Wars The Return. I forget which one Magmatron's from. Um, he looks fantastic. I'm not, you know, put, trying to put the figure down, just my own collecting. Not going to be buying them. But we did see pictures of that Cybertronian Wheeljack, which I believe is going to be a Voyager class. Totally going to get that. That is 100% uh, going next to the Voy or Cybertronian Jazz and Bumblebee that I have on my shelf. Jazz was in my top 10 Transformers of 2023. 
Um, really like those ideas and those designs. As for what I currently have on pre-order with Transformers, um, right now I have the uh, Decepticon Nemesis Space Bridge set, which is Megatron, Soundwave, and Shockwave. I personally keep going back and forth as to whether or not I want to keep that pre-order open because uh, I have the Earthrise Megatron, I have the Siege Shockwave, and I have the Netflix Soundwave. It's just those three again with the throne that came with the uh, Studio Series Starscream. But the big drawing factor to me is they have clean paint jobs. They don't have the battle damage. And I, I don't, I'm, I got real tired of the battle damage real quick. Um, so it's something I have to think about. You know, it, it is an expensive set and do I really want them? You know, Shockwave especially doesn't even come with all his armor parts. He's just the robot. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a hefty price tag for three figures I already own with just slightly different paint apps. I don't know if I need them. Um, I know there are probably ways that I could take the uh, the battle damage, you know, the weathered look off those figures. I'm, I'm afraid to chance it because if I do screw them up, then like then I'm really out of luck, especially because some of those figures have gotten hard to find, namely the uh, the Netflix Soundwave. That is not an easy figure to come by. So uh, debating if I'm keeping that pre-order up. I do have the Ghost Starscream and Waspinator set uh, on pre-order. I don't really care about the Waspinator. I'll probably end up selling him, but I really, really want a Ghost Starscream. I've never owned a Ghost Starscream figure. I know that this one doesn't have fully translucent plastic everywhere, but there is some. So uh, that is a win to me. I also have the Studio Series 86 Scrap Heap. He's a Junkion on pre-order. Um, I don't mind building up that Junkion army. It's just gonna be one Scrap Heap. Originally, I thought I'd do two of every Junkion. You could have them riding each other, but these Junkions don't look great riding each other. Uh, they, they, it, it doesn't look fantastic. I do have uh, two of um, the one that came out after Rekar, whose name I'm blanking on now, just so I could have Rekar riding one, and it, it doesn't look fantastic. So um, I did buy two Rekars, and then I took the uh, the second Rekar, and I, I forget who did the upgrade kit. Was it Nana or something? Um, but I, I changed that robot around so he looks like a different junkie on. Um, also, the other pre-order that I have is the Yolo Park Optimus Prime. That is a model kit. I picked up the Yolo Park Megatron model kit. It was a lot of fun. Uh, part of me wishes I built it on camera because it was a really easy build, and I would love to do that with the Optimus. So when that comes, I'll probably end up building him on camera. But because I like Transformers so much, I do have five Transformers that I would really like to see made this year. Some I think could happen. Some I think uh, might be a bit of a pipe dream. So let's get into it. First, I'd like to see Gears. Gears was rumored to be coming out during the Kingdom line. I believe he was even in the Kingdom poster and he got nixed at the last minute. So I would like to see Gears done uh, the way that they've done Brawn and the way that they've done Warpath and Beachcomber, you know, upscaling those mini bots. I think it's a great thing. So I would love to see Gears come out. I would also love to see Swoop. Studio Series 86 Swoop. We got the other four Dinobots. So I feel like Swoop has to be coming. There's probably rumors about him. There are so many Transformers rumors that I can't keep up with them. Um, but Swoop, I feel like I feel like he's definitely coming. I would love to see Swoop. Um, another figure that I would love to see, I'd love to see more Combiners done in the style that they did Minasaur. I really like how they made Minasaur work. Obviously, it was a little easier to do that because you have the whole back of a truck, you know, that can be the armor bits that worked well for Minasaur. Um, I don't know if that's going to fit every combiner, but a lot of the Combiner Wars combiners don't look as great as I think they should. Um, specifically, I would love to see Bruticus. Bruticus is probably my second favorite combiner. My first being Predaking, but I think the, uh, the, the Predaking that's up there is really, really good. I think that was Power of the Primes. Um, so I, I'm okay with that Predaking, but I would love to see a new Bruticus to put on my shelf in that style, in that kind of... I don't want to say the same way as Minasaur because I don't want to be copy and paste, but you know, a similar style where maybe, where maybe the back of Onslaught can kind of pop off and become like a weapons platform that then becomes like the armor bits that you kind of shove the other robots onto. I'd, I'd be curious to see if they could do that. I would also love to see the G1 character Sandstorm redone. I have a G1 Sandstorm on my shelf. I did buy, was it the Thrilling 30 Sandstorm? It, it's a cool figure. It is an IDW design, and while I love the original IDW run, I want things that look how they looked in the cartoon, in the original comics as well. And uh, that's why I would love to see a, an updated, very G1 Sandstorm. I know, you know, look, I'm a G1 fan. I, I say it all the time. I know other people might not care about that, but I would love to see that. I, I won't get rid of my G1 version. He'll 
definitely have a place somewhere in my display, but I would love to have that character on my shelf in, in a new updated, uh, more to the original figure look. And then finally, my last bit, um, we got a lot of G2 this year. I got spoiled. I'd love some more G2. If they want to give me the rest of the Dinobots in their Generation 2 color schemes, like a green slag and a red snarl, I would take that in a heartbeat. You want to give me the unreleased colors? I, there was like a silver and turquoise swoop, if we get a swoop. Um, I feel like there was a sludge in some crazy colors. I would take all those unreleased colors, all those crazy colorways. I would take any of that. Um, I had a lot of fun with the Toxitron collection this year, although none of it made it into the top 10. I would love to see more, and especially because we have two G2 Stunticons, I'd very much like to, uh, very much like to finish a G2 Metasaur. All right, and my final area to talk about are Marvel Legends. Um, you know I'm a big Marvel Legends fan. Currently, what I have on pre-order, I have Vision. I have the Jack-O-Lantern, Tombstone, and Scarlet Spider from that retro card Spider-Man wave. Um, I passed on Assassin Spider-Man and whatever the other Spider-Man was in that wave. Um, but the one thing that I am kind of eyeing is Hollow's Eve. I ended up buying Chasm because I got him on a great sale. Um, Hollow's Eve will go well with him, and uh, they, Chasm and Hollow's Eve can pair with another character I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But um, I feel like if I can catch Hollow, Hollow's Eve on a sale, I'll pick her up. I don't feel like I need her, but she will go well next to Chasm, so there is that. Um, the other, only other Marvel Legends things that I have on pre-order at the moment are Wolverine and the Sabretooth 2-pack and the Brood Wolverine and Lanja 2-pack. Those look great. Oh, and I have the new Angel on, on uh, pre-order as well. That went up as uh, a week ago as of this, or last week as of this video. So already looking like a good year. We do know more stuff is coming, namely two more Wolverine packs, the Wolverine and Hulk as they appear in their uh, Vegas attire. Can't wait for that pack. That is how I've wanted that Fix-It Hulk. Uh, the blue suit ones are fine. I wanted him in the white Vegas suit with Wolverine, with the patch and, and that suit. That, that's, that's what I really want. And there is that Wolverine and Psylocke set coming out. Um, I'm going to get it for the armored Psylocke. The Wolverine uh, uh, is similar to that retro card Wolverine we got a few years ago, um, which I kind of begrudgingly picked up. So I'm, I'm going to get it, but, uh, you know, mostly for the Psylocke. We also know that there's an X-Men 97 wave coming consisting of Cyclops, Jean Grey, the Executioner, which I am blown away by, Magneto as he appeared... Uh, as I guess he's going to appear in the show, but also kind of in the comics when he was mentoring the New Mutants with a big M on his chest. Um, we have Nightcrawler in that way, which I'm excited to get another Nightcrawler um, for a display reason. And the Goblin Queen is in that. And that is a very, what's the word I'm looking for, conservative take on Goblin Queen, but also kind of how she appears in current comics. And in the current comics, she did kind of team with Chasm and... Um, and Hallow's Eve. So part of me feels like I could put those three on a shelf together and feel like I have a cool little display from something that happened during the time of the Krakoan age uh, of X-Men on my shelf. So that will probably be why I end up getting all three of those characters. In terms of top five Marvel Legends that I want this year, um, some of them I, I feel like we know are coming. Others, I feel like this is a bit of a pipe dream. But um, I want Wolfsbane and Pharaoh, and I'm counting that as one. I talked to Dwight at New York Comic Con this year, which I've said in another video, and when I was talking to him, I asked about Wolfsbane and Feral, and he said that he could tell me that one of those characters is coming this year. And I said, which one? And he repeated that he could only tell me that one of those characters are coming. Uh, somebody told me they feel that is probably Wolfsbane. I'm slightly inclined to agree, um, because with Feral, um, apparently they might have to, the Marvel Legends team might have to pay, like, Rob Liefeld for a, uh, like, a licensing fee or something. I don't know if that's true, but, uh, I, part of me thinks it's going to be Wolfsbane, and Feral might be further down the pike than we, than we realize, but uh, I'll take either one. I want to finish off my classic 90s teams. Going along with that is my next pick, which is the Rachel Summers Phoenix. Um, right now, I have the latest retro card Dark Phoenix on my shelf which a, with a uh, gray suit, black widow head, which I'm using as Rachel. It's a decent stand-in, but I really want that all red costume with the spikes, you know, the hound costume Rachel to go with the rest of Excalibur on my shelf. Switching gears a little bit over to the Spider-Man side of things, you know, I constantly say like, oh, there aren't that many Spider-Man characters I, I, I want anymore. And then they put someone out and I go, oh, I didn't think of him, I'd buy him. But I really want Carrion. I really want to finish out the Maximum Carnage team. Carrion was there. 
I want him. I think that would be a fantastic figure. Um, I kind of started working on a custom, which I, I really do need to finish, but as it normally goes, when I finish a custom, Marvel Legends, the Marvel Legends team announces the figure, so I feel like I should just need to hurry up and finish it, and we'll get an official one. From there, uh, switching gears again to the Avengers, we are still, I guess, con celebrating uh, the Avengers milestone stuff, since we're getting that Wasp to go along with the Hazlab Giant Man. Uh, there is some rumors, I believe, for a classic Miss Marvel, um, you know, Captain Marvel, whatever you want to call Carol. Um, I'm, and I'm fine with all that. I'm, if they do a classic, like, old-school original costume, Miss Marvel, she's going to go with my uh, Dark Avengers to represent Moonstone. But the one Avengers character who I really, really want, and I'm, I'm, I'm cutting down a lot of areas from Marvel, but the one Avengers character I really want is Jack of Hearts. I feel like they can do a solid, fantastic Jack of Hearts figure with great modern articulation and great sculpting. So I'm really hoping for a Jack of Hearts figure. Even if you give me it as a two-pack, I would take a two-pack of Jack of Hearts with um, Scott Lang as he appeared during the Jeff Johns run of Avengers because that would be a great dynamic. That would be a great two-pack. I would take that Ant-Man as well. Um, there are a couple Ant-Mans I'd, I'd take, quite honestly. I'd take a new Black Ant to look more like how he appears in the comics now, other than that old Walgreens one. But I digress. That's not the top five. Jack of Hearts is where it's at. No, my real number five that I want this year, I had written down Beta Ray Bill, who would be nice, but it occurred to me as I was speaking that we got a Kristar this year. Um, and while I'm not buying it because I don't really have an attachment to the character, Marvel is reprinting all of Rom this year. Apparently, they got the rights back to Rom the Space Knight. Hasbro owns Rom the Space Knight, or to some degree, some some part of the tra of the copyright trademark. I I'm not 100% sure how it all of it works, but if Hasbro has the character, Marvel's got the license, whatever. Let's get a Rom the Space Knight. I will stick Rom the Space Knight on my cosmic shelf, right by Galactus and Silver Surfer. I think that would be awesome. Uh, so my number five is indeed Rom the Space Knight. And with all that said, that just about does it for 2024 for me. Look, I guarantee I'm going to buy more than the 10 figures I talked about wanting. I, or, or 15 figures, how many I talked about. Um, I guarantee I'm going to buy more. But I can't wait to see what this year has in store for, for everybody. I hope you have a great 2024 in terms of collecting. I'll still be putting out videos. It's not like I'm going anywhere. But uh, I definitely will be cutting back in certain areas just in an effort to save money. I got a kid now. I got to be careful about this stuff. So let me know what you are most excited for in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Let me know what you think the toy lines that you buy might put out. If there are any rumors that you know for sure, or that, I don't want to say you know for sure, if there are any rumors that I missed that you think are interesting, drop them in the comments below. I'll try to address them. So until next time, I've been Dan. You've all been pretty awesome. I'll see you later. Have a great one. Come